Um, tonight's sermon, um, familiar passage to most, is Psalms 23. But I want to pull something different out of it, hopefully that you haven't heard. But what I would like to do is, you know, sometimes when we hear something so often, it loses its oomph. Like, for instance, we so easily and quickly say, and it's true, God loves you. And sometimes the enemy will say, no, not me. No, not me. But if you stop and think about that phrase, that God loves you, that's life-changing. Because God sees something in you. He sees his creation. And so tonight, I'm going to just read through the 23rd Psalms. I asked Heather not to put it on the screen because I would like for, if you could, I would like to pretend, for you to pretend, that this is the first time that you've heard it. That it's not something so familiar that it's just like, yeah, they say that at the funerals and that makes a really great card. Before I've told you that David would work wonders at a Hallmark place and I truly believe that David was the apple of God's eyes because he spoke from his heart. Not that he had a perfect life, he messed up quite a bit if you know David's story and he had some personality defects and all kinds of stuff. But God felt his heart. And David just didn't think certain things, and that was enough because God could read his thoughts, but he actually put pen to paper, and he actually wrote down what God means to him and how God has helped him, and he journaled throughout his life. We saw him through soul-sick days, through the darkest hours of his life, and yet before you finish reading, he would then still turn it to God, the praise of our Heavenly Father. So in this Psalms 23, there's one verse that we're going to kind of talk about tonight. Um, It won't be a long sermon, but you know, sometimes um, great things come in small packages. Have you never uh, had a time in your life where one sentence or one phrase was just what you needed? In fact, one phrase that maybe would hit home so much that it was a game changer for you. So please never discount if you think, oh, well, that was just really short. Maybe it's really short because there's so much power of what God wants to say in it that that's what he wants you to dwell on. So tonight, I'm going to read the 23rd Psalms. I'm going to ask you to pretend that this is the first time that you heard it because it is a great, it's a great love poem. And then I want to pull out one part of it And we're going to talk about it for just a few minutes. So it goes something like this. David was a shepherd. And so he knew what a shepherd did. He knew that a shepherd would lay down his life for his flock. The shepherd would have sleepless nights. The shepherd would make sure that even if he couldn't eat, that his flock would eat. He named each sheep. The sheep knew his voice. He even got around them so much that he would know the sounds of their voice. He knew their personality. And so this is where David is speaking from. He's speaking from his heart and what it means to be a shepherd. A shepherd will go when he hears the lamb crying and save and rescue him. A shepherd will know if one is missing. And the Bible even says that he'll leave the flock to find the one. So one of the greatest compliments I believe that David could give our Lord is calling him shepherd. So it goes like this. The Lord is my shepherd, and I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures, and then he leads me beside the still waters. Ah, he restores my soul. And then he leads me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. And yea, even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I don't fear any evil. Why? Because you're with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. And then if that's not enough, you also prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies, and you anoint my head with oil and my cup It runs over. And surely goodness 
and mercy me shall f- mercy shall follow me all the days of my life and then i'm going to dwell in the house of the lord forever psalms 23 is something good for you to memorize to quote it to yourself because in that short little passage it covers just about every stage of life i want you to pay attention to the first part of the 23rd Psalms, it says the Lord is. So the Psalms is about what the Lord is. It's about who the Lord is. He says that the Lord is my shepherd and therefore I'm provided for. Therefore I don't lack anything. And he says then he makes me to lie down in the green pastures. The Hebrew translation of that is he settles my soul. He calms me down. He comforts me. So who do I run to when everything is chaotic, when I need comfort, when I need calmness in my life? Right here, David tells us, run to the Lord because he's the one that can help you to lie down in those green pastures. And then it says that he leads me beside the still waters. Oh, and I love this part, and he refreshes my soul when you're running dry when your list of to-dos is way too long when you've got things on every side pushing in and you feel like you have nothing else to give david says you run to the lord he's going to refresh your soul he's going to give you his strength when you're weak he's going to give you his comfort and his encouragement when you're discouraged And then the part that we're going to talk about here in a little bit is, and he leads me in the paths of righteousness for his namesake. So the first part of it is all about him and me. Him first and then me. It's a relationship. And then it goes from God and me to the next part is me and God. Now I take the forefront, you take the forefront, because then it says, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, because you are with me, and your rod and staff, they comfort me. He prepares a table before the enemies, and he anoints my head with oil until it runs over, and I love this part, that surely goodness and mercy shall follow me. So as you're following Christ, what's following you? Coming up behind is surely goodness and mercy, and then the best of all, the reason to live and do what we do is because one day, one day, you'll be with him forever. See, the Lord, it's, it's him and you. The Lord is someone who, who has goodness and he has mercy and a place for you to call home. The Lord is who you'll be with forever if you're a believer. That's a relationship. I want to talk about where it says that he guides me along the right paths for his namesake. It says that he... Um, guide you in the paths of righteousness. That means right living, right standing with God. And he does that so that he will get glory, so that others will follow in those footsteps. The right, righteous means the right way, the right standing with God. If so if you want your dollars to be right, stand in the right way with God. If you want your relationships to be right, then walk in the right way following your shepherd. If you follow your shepherd, every area of your life will be improved by his blessings because you're following where he's telling you to go and there's blessings in that, there's peace in that, there's comfort in that, there's strength in that, there's anointing in that. So he says, here's the shepherd and I'm going to follow the shepherd. Why? Because he knows where he's going. So if you want things in your life to be right, if you want a blessed life, then follow the path of the shepherd and let him guide you. 
every decision that you make, every decision that I make, leads us down one path or the other. It's not neutral. It leads us down the path of life or destruction. In other words, what you sow is what you'll reap. That's in the Bible as well. So if you don't like the crop that you're seeing, start sowing some different seeds. Change the, change the things that you're planting. See, some people, Monday through Saturday, will sow all kinds of seeds, and then they pray for a crop failure. They don't want to come into their life because of the decisions that they've been making, so they pray that, God, don't let that come to fruition. I know I've been doing some crazy stuff, and I don't want to reap any consequences from that. It's just like the child that has a test coming up that hasn't studied at all, but right before the test, they get real prayerful, don't they? Dear Heavenly Father, please help us. Well, see, the thing is, is if you want good things in your life, if you want to have a, a clear conscience and peace in your soul, then make a, make a conscious decision of the decisions that you're making and following because they're leading you in a path, one way or other. You have to then ask, who am I following on that path? I hope it's the good shepherd, because if I just follow myself, I'm going to fall off a cliff, and if I just follow the enemy, I know that I'm going to die when I fall off that cliff. So David tells us to follow the good shepherd. And then right after Psalms is a wonderful book called Proverbs, and it tells you how to actually do that. It's filled with all kinds of wisdom. Solomon, if you don't know much about his story, was considered next to Christ, of course, the wisest person ever, the wealthiest person ever. If you put his dollar amounts into today's economy, he was a trillionaire time and time again. And before he died, he wrote down the things that he had learned in life because he wanted to hand those over to the younger generation coming up. So if you want a life that's prosperous, if you want a life that's blessed with rich relationships, then Proverbs is where I would suggest that you start. I would listen to the things that Solomon says. Solomon was following the good shepherd when he wrote Proverbs. There's a whole book that's dedicated to the principle of following this path. But in following the path, there's pauses in the path. It's not just a constant move, move, move. There's times and the Bible's terms is where we'll hear, wait upon the Lord. Wait. Wait doesn't mean don't do anything. So what does it mean when you wait upon the Lord? It doesn't mean you just get lazy all of a sudden because lazy life is going to reap lazy consequences because God said to be hearers and doers of the word. So here's what you do when you wait. When you're not hearing God's voice on which path to take, you do what you know to do that is right, and then let him do what you can't do. That's waiting on God. I had a situation come up that I had been contemplating for a while, um, major life decision, not knowing which way God wanted to take me, and I didn't hear anything. And I would wait a few months, and I would pray about it again, and nothing. And I would think down the road, of, okay, so is it going to still be this way three years down the road? Is this, is this where you want me? And so finally I said, God, you're not, you're not saying anything. So here's what I'm going to do. And I told him what I was going to do, and I did have plan A and plan B, and I was going to be okay either way. But I started with plan A. And plan A, God's favor moved quickly, kind of like lightning. And that let me know 100% okay, this is what you want me to do. So there's times in your life where, when you haven't heard anything, you think, what is the best decision? What decision do I think God is wanting me to make? And then he will let you know. He'll shut a door or he'll open a door one way or the other. So waiting on the Lord doesn't mean not doing anything. Waiting on the Lord, as Jesus says, means occupy until I come. So many Christians, I hear them say, and, and I get it, 
and times of frustration and times of after watching the news or hearing the news reports, they'll say, Jesus, come. Come, Jesus, come. Right now. Well, it's because we're tired. We don't want to do anymore. If Jesus comes, we get the easy way out, right? But see, Jesus hasn't came yet. So that means that we're not to live our life just hoping for when he comes and putting off everything for when he comes. We're to occupy, we're to be busy, we are to be doing things now until he comes. And we need to make sure that in our doing that we're following the good shepherd. So there's pauses in this path. And again, you do what you know to do until he shows up and does what only he can do. For instance, when I was little, I would hear the phrase, my ship's coming in. Ah, my ship's coming in. God, I'm waiting for my ship to come in. And I can almost hear God say, the ships in the water swim out to it. You go to the ship. A song that was popular a long time ago that I really, really liked, it was a Christian song that said, God, why don't you do something? And God said, I did, I made you. Now go do something. God wants us to be busy doing his work, following him on the right path. With, ask God for wisdom if you don't feel you're very smart in the spiritual realm. Ask him for wisdom to know the right thing to do and then do it. You don't want to die with good intentions. Oh, I meant to. Oh, I meant to. Or somebody else to pass away and you had really good intentions. Oh, I meant to. Don't just think it. Do it. And he says, why do I want you to do this? Why do I want you to follow these paths? Because it will bring glory to God and his namesake. In other words, you'll be a good ambassador for him. I apologize to a lot of people that I talk to throughout the week in different situations because God was misrepresented to them and how a church should have been to them was very misrepresented. And I said, I'm so sorry, God's getting the bad rap on that one and that's not God's character. God is a God that will love and will heal. He won't destroy and divide when people are trying to come together. Follow his path. And if you follow his path, here's what I love, that it says that goodness and mercy is going to be on that path, and it's going to follow you. I need mercy. And I like good things to come into my life, and I like good things for my loved ones. And if I follow that path that God is telling me to walk down, I have a much better chance of having good things in my life. So in closing, the thing that I want you to ask yourself is if you take an inventory right now of where you are in your life, do you like the path and the results from that path? If you do, good job. You keep going towards that path because it's bringing you life. But if you don't change where you are in your path right now, you're going to be walking the same path five or ten years down the road. You can't just hope for it to get better. You have to make a U-turn maybe or cross over to a complete different path. The good news is, is you can do that tonight. Isn't it great that you are in charge of you? that I don't have to have somebody else tell me, now do this, do that, do this. I have free will and free choice. So if I don't like the consequences of my life so far because it's been a total of all of my decisions, I can change that. And it's a partnership. And then God will always meet. One of the most heart-touching things about the story of the prodigal son was when the prodigal son was coming home, and it said that the father ran out to meet him. What that tells me in that story is the father was always looking. He didn't just walk away and go, well, guess that's it. I've, I've waited and I've waited for 
months and he hasn't come home. No, that father was constantly watching. And so if you don't like the road that you've been on, if you don't like the consequences that's gotten you to where you are, God's just waiting for you to turn around and walk down the road. And you don't even have to make it to him. That's what's so great. It didn't say that the father just kind of nonchalantly walked by or waited. No. He ran. He ran. The minute he saw his child make a turn towards him, he ran full force and wrapped his arms around him. God wants you to be on the same path with him. And all you have to do is take one step. One step towards your shepherd, towards your savior. And he's going to run towards you. And he'll say, follow me. But you know, he doesn't walk too far ahead. Just enough. When I'm hiking on a trail and I'm very unfamiliar with it, I don't like to be the leader. I like somebody who knows the trail, who knows the way to go. Because then I just follow them and I'm at peace. My son has a great sense of direction. Me, not so much. So when we'll go on hikes, I never worry if we're going the wrong direction, as long as I follow him. And why does he go first, too? Because he knows the trail. And he knows where it's a little steep. He knows where it's a little rocky. And when it gets rocky, what does he usually do? He turns around and gives me his hand. That's what God does for us. He knows the path that we're going to go on is a little rocky, and sometimes it's steep. But you don't have to lead the way. He just says, you, you watch me. You trust me. And if it gets too bad, if there's too much water, if there's too much mud, I'm just going to throw you over my shoulder, and I'm going to carry you. But if you're not walking the path where he is, you don't have that guarantee. Tag, you're it. That's scary. That's scary to think that I would be it, that only in my wisdom, only in my willpower, only in my determination can things be changed. Oh, it's much easier to just follow the leader. But you need to ask yourself, who is the leader in your life? And if you don't like that leader, if it's you and you've really messed it up, if it's the enemy and he's really destroyed you, the good news is you can fire him. Fire his behind. See how I cleaned that up? I wanted to say something else. (laughs) But fire him. Find a new leader. The one and only true leader. That's your heavenly father, and David knew that, so David wrote this psalms about what happens when you follow the shepherd. Let God take the lead, because then surely goodness and mercy will follow you. The closing song tonight is My Redeemer Lives, and oh, that makes me so happy. We don't have to go put flowers on a grave and go, well, that was a good run. He did some good stuff. Too bad he passed away. No, your Redeemer, he's as alive now as he was the first time he took his earthly breath. And he lives. And he lives for you and I. And in the song, I love how it explains that he's the one that holds the stars in his hand. And he's the one that tells the ocean, oh, you can only come this far. That's the one that I want to follow in life. God bless you.